Hi, this is Darshan Santhal and welcome back to another video on integral cal and differential calculus. So in this video, we shall be talking about something called implicit differentiation. So what is implicit differentiation? Well, it's just another way to take derivatives, another, or, or a method to take a different type of derivatives. Like the product rule help us take the derivative of products of functions, and the, the chain rule helps us take the derivative of compositions of functions, implicit differentiation helps us take another type of derivative. All right. So uh, let's get started and see what that what it, uh, that really looks like. So we know how to derive functions in the form of, or we know how to differentiate form functions in the form of the following: y equals f of x, right? So we've got a y here, and that's going to equal some function of x. And then when we differentiate this function with respect to x, we get basically something that we've seen in previous videos, like a chain rule, a product rule, and we get some derivative with respect to x, right? And this f of x could be anything. You could have like a sine of x, right? You could have a polynomial, something like x squared, or all kinds of things. Basically, as long as it has x, all you have to do is take the derivative of this thing with respect to x, and you're going to get basically something like we've seen in our rules. Right? But what happens, right? what happens if we don't have something of that form, y equals f of x? Or what happens if we don't have that? What happens if you have something like this, like 4x squared plus 5y squared equals 10? This is not in the form y equals f of x because you've got the y in the mix of things. right? So that's a little bit of a problem here. So now, the intuitive way, just by based on what we know right now, is to solve for y. right? So you could say, I think if you solve for y, you get... Um, uh, 10 minus 4x squared over 5 and the square root of all of that, right? That's what you get. Now, not only is that a, and of course you have plus or minus, and not only is that a very difficult derivative to take, you know, you'd have to take the derivative of plus, it's just too complicating at this level, and not only is that very difficult to derive in the first place, but at the same time, there are also other functions, right? Other functions that you cannot actually solve for y, in which you cannot actually solve for y. So for example, consider the following. So over there, no matter what you do, you're not going to be able to solve for y. Right? You could take the inverse sign, but you're going to still have that y in there. Take the exponential, subtract 2, you still have a y in there. There's no way you can easily get to something of the form y equals f of x. That's, it's not possible. right? There's just some things in which you can't do that. All right, and if you do, it often ends up being more complicating than you want it to be. Right? So that's a problem for us. We want to be able to take these kinds of derivatives. So here's what we use. We use something called implicit differentiation. So implicit differentiation allows us to take the derivatives of variables which are not the derivative which are not what we're taking the derivative with respect to. So in all our problems so far, we've taken our derivatives with respect to x, and this is indicated by the fact that we use something like a ddx of some function, right? We always say ddx or dy dx. That means we're taking the derivative of that function with respect to x. So if you have a y in there, well, we can't derive y with respect to x at this point, right? So we're going to need to use what's called implicit differentiation to really help us uh, work through that. Okay. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. So let's look into that. So implicit differentiation really just involves a bunch of steps. Okay. So uh, there's a couple of, and that's the very simplified version of how you'd solve problems with implicit differentiation. And the calculus behind this really isn't that complicating. It's just the, the algebra that you'll eventually get can sometimes really be annoying. Okay, so here's how you do it. So derive anything without y normally. Okay, so, and the reason for this again is because you're deriving with respect to x. So when deriving with respect to x, you don't do anything new. Okay, sorry for my poor handwriting, but there's nothing new you really need to do. Because when you're deriving with respect to x, you're, when you're deriving your function with respect to x, and you have x's, or constants for that matter, there's nothing you need to do that's new. It's just basically the same stuff that we've been doing so far with like all our other rules. Now, what happens if you have a y in it? Right, Because the y is not the variable with which we are not the variable with which we are uh, taking the derivative with respect to so here's the steps that you use when taking the derivative with respect to, with when you have when you're taking the derivative of terms with y in it okay for anything with y just derive it as normal okay just derive it as normal ignore the y and then you tag on a dy dx at the end okay so just tag on a dy dx at the end and this 
this, what this does is it tells you, and that tells you, that tells you that no matter what you've got, you're, di you're still differentiating that y term with respect to x. Okay, so that's basically what that dy dx serves to remind you of. So when you take, so we'll see some examples in the in, uh, in a minute here, and you'll see what I mean. But that dy dx just serves as a reminder to tell you that you're differentiating y with respect to x. Okay. And your last step is just to solve for dy dx. Right. Because dy dx, remember, it just dy dx represents the, deriv the derivative of the function, right? So you, all you're doing is you're going to solve for dy dx. And an important note to make here is that okay, it's okay to have y's in your answer. So you already you started with with a formula that had y's and x's. So it's okay, therefore, to finish in a function that has y's and x's. The only difference is that instead of just using an x coordinate to find this the slope of the tangent line at a point, you'd need actually need the y coordinate as well. That's the only difference, right? So it's okay to have y's in your final answer. There's nothing else more you need to do with that because you start with a y, you end with a y. Okay, so that's basically the steps. So I'd recommend you like just n copy these down or take a screenshot, or whatever, because these are going to be important as we plow on through some quick examples. All right, let's take a look at a couple of quick examples just to sort of nail in what um, I'm really talking about here. So. All right, so let's take a look at this function, for example. So we've got 3x minus 2y equals 6. Again, we start different. Let's just start by differentiating. Let's differentiate each term, All right? So d dx of 3x. So again, notice we're differentiating with respect to x, and c. And again, let's let's start think of this in terms of our rules, right? So things with respect to x, anything with an x in it, just differentiate as normal, right? So what's the derivative of 3x? Well, it's just going to be 3, right? Now, what's the derivative? We'll come back to that later. So what's the derivative of 6? Well, what's the derivative of 6? Well, that's going to be 0, right? Because constants don't have no rate of change because, you know, they're constants. So that's so therefore, that's just going to be 0. Now, how would we deal with the y again? So again, let's de we remember the steps are when you have a y, you derive as normal, okay? And then you tag on dy dx, okay? So those are two steps. So let's just derive this as normal. What the derivative of this normally would just be 2, right? Because you got this, just you have, all you have is a 2. So you'd have a 2 times dy dx. All right, so this, again, the dy dx just serves as a reminder that you're differentiating y with respect to x. Okay, and therefore you need to you need to just take that into account when you're uh, to, you just need to take that into account. Okay, and now we just go ahead and solve for dy dx. Okay, so what we could do is we could we're gonna go ahead and add two dy dx to both sides. So this would be plus two dy dx, and plus two dy dx over there. Those two would just these two cancel out. So we're gonna be left with three equals two dy dx and therefore dy dx is equal three to three halves nice and simple eh? so that's how you'd uh, do that all right let's take a look at this example now so it's slightly different but it's again the same a same concepts at mine so let's take the derivative of each term so d dx of x equals d dx of secant of y plus ddx of 3. Okay, so this is just going to be 0. So this is just going to go to 0. So we can just ignore that. And now let's take this one step further. So the derivative of x is just, the ddx of x is just 1. So we're just going to write that out. What's the derivative of secant? If you remember, it's actually secant y and y. And it's also a good point just to remind you that these things don't go away. So we may have we may not be studying chain rule and stuff specifically or these rules specifically, but they still don't go away. They still come they're still really relevant to what we're studying right now. So make sure you still remember them, okay? And of course, now we can't forget our dy dx. So we'd have our dy dx over there. And this one's actually a fairly simple one. All we have to do is divide both sides by secant y tangent of y. And we find that our answer 
is going to be that dy dx equals 1 over secant of y tangent of y. There's your final answer. Once again, keep in mind that it's, it's okay to have, to have a y in your final answer. Okay? Because we start with a y, we're allowed to have a y in the end. All right. So that's two examples, and uh, I think that should be it for this video. So I hope you uh, found, these, found this helpful. I hope you sort of got a gist of what implicit differentiation is for now. We'll probably talk a little bit more about the theory behind it later. We'll do some more complicated examples in future videos. But um, yeah, for now, just know that implicit differentiation is a way to take derivatives of functions that are not explicitly in the form y equals f of x. And it also helps you take the derivatives of... Um, of functions that have variables that are not x, it allows you to take the derivative of those variables with respect to x, and sort of just tells you how to handle that. So that's what different that's what uh, implicit differentiation differentiation teaches you, and uh, I hope that was helpful.